Hi everyone and welcome once again to a little video on how I painted a leopard using watercolour. Now before I start, if you would like to paint this in real time, have a full 5 hour 20 minute video tutorial on my website, plus don't forget over 60 other video lessons. So loads of hours of learning how to paint wildlife in watercolour. So pop along to gain access to my website devonartist.co.uk, I'll put the link down below in the description for you, where you find hours, weeks, in fact months of fun. Just plenty to keep you going, okay? Now any materials that I use as well, I'll put a link down below again in the description for you. Click on that, that'll take to my website where you can click on my affiliate links to have a look at the products which I use. Right, okay, so let's make a start and I'm going to walk you through on how I painted this leopard's head. Now the first thing I like to do is paint the eye. I know, it's just thing about eyes, I like to have something to look at when I'm working on a painting. So you've got all that lovely fur to work on, but yet you keep looking back at these lovely eyes. And I always like to spend quite a lot of time working on the eyes as well, because the more detail that you can add into those eyes, the more kind of depth you can get there as well, and the more life you can create. So it's all about working with the layers. So you're gonna start off light, and start gradually adding the colors in, and gradually getting dark as you go along. But you can see what I'm doing here. I'm actually going to go through a softening process through each individual layer. But by doing that, that enables me to, well, once it's dry, I can then think about putting another layer over the top and then gradually increase these layers as I go through the process. You have got to be careful though, because you don't want to make it too muddy looking either. So you've got to be really, really steady with that when you're doing this. So working my size double zero brush, um, I'm trying to really add those fine details in just a little bit at a time. And you can see I want to gradually darken this now by adding more of a blacky brown colour. So you're looking at something like burnt umber and lamp black. Sometimes I may add a little bit of brown in there as well, so as in the raw sienna and burnt sienna sort of browns as well as burnt umber. So we get those colours in. You don't always have to reserve the highlights within the eyes as well. You can just paint over them areas if you want to and just add those in afterwards, a little bit of watercolour white. So you can easily do that. Now if you fancy painting a tiger's eye from our live video feed here on YouTube, I'll just quickly pop a little card up there for you now. So you can click on that to take you to a new window so you can play that after you've watched this video. Also, when I'm working on an eyes, well before I start thinking about going around the body and putting the foundation washes on, which I'll talk about very shortly. I do like to make sure that I've got a little bit of fur around the eye. I don't know what it is, I just like to be able to see the eye coming together if you know what I mean. I just want to be able to see it starting to form and shape. So now I'm going to add that little bit of watercolour white in there, just give it that extra kind of zing, that extra kind of life, that sparkle within that eye. And the thing when you're using watercolour white as well, you don't want to be adding too much in one go. So you've got to be really, really careful with that. So I always say to my members on my website, you know the one, devonartist.co.uk, is just take your time, you know, and always add probably less than you think you'll need. Now working on the nose, I'm gradually thinking about adding the wet and wet washes first of all. I'm going to do that to get some form of a foundation wash and some form of a kind of basic grounding level if you wish. So I'm looking at getting that basic layer on first and I'm going to gradually build on top of that colour with the detail. But doing this, I want to do this by using stippling motions and scumbling motions. But again, throughout the main video, I do go through all this with you as well. So you, go, you get all the obviously step-by-step -step, real time instructions when I'm talking through this. But it's the kind of thing I like to take my time with. I like to paint the main features first, as I mentioned earlier, like the eyes and the nose, not always the ears. It depends on the photograph in question and how the ears are positioned. Usually on the side of the head, I know. Don't you dare tell me that, I know. But I work on the ears. But I'm going to start thinking about adding these main elements in first before I even think about working on the fur itself. And you can see I'm stippling this now by adding a dark colour, and this is more of a bluey blacky mix, so more of a kind of phthalo blue and lamp black. So you can see how I did this. I started off with all the light layers first of all, using the tapping, the stippling, the scumbling motions, and then thinking about on the top of the nose the direction that the fur comes down the nose. So you've got to think about that all the time, the, the, the brush directions, the fur directions. Which way does the fur grow? 
So looking at the palest colours first for the background wash, this is where we start to think about the body. And then looking at like the paler colours first, so we're going to be looking at colours like raw sienna, raw umber, burnt umber, those kind of colours. But I want to make sure that these colours are to a very watery consistency. But before I add these on, I like to wet the paper first. But I'll only probably wet maybe a third of the head of this leopard to begin with. And that just kind of enables me to kind of not rush around trying to get the first coat of wash on there before it dries too quick. But I also like to wet the paper probably two, maybe three times. And by doing that, that gives you a little bit more working time um, when you're trying to add this first kind of wet and wet foundation wash on. Because don't forget, these foundation washes will help kind of create the, the background tonal values, the background colours, and also some of the shape that we need within the head here. I also like to vary those colours as well, so down by the chin, the old chin chin chin, you can see this is more of a grey blue. So that's going to be something like phthalo blue, like black, those kind of colour. And by doing that, I add that into a watery consistency once again. Now the beauty about watercolours as well is because we want to start off really light to begin with, we have to think about, as I mentioned, gradually building up the colours as we go along. And naturally, watercolour will dry that little bit lighter. You know, how much lighter depends on how much pigment you got within your water. So obviously, the more water you have, the lighter the paint will be. So obviously, when it dries, it's going to dry even lighter because there's more water added to the paint. See what I mean? So the more paint you add, the darker, or should I say, it won't dry quite as light. Ha! Huh, you got the idea anyway. So that's basically how it all works. So add more water, the lighter it will dry on the paper. Now, sometimes I'll let it dry naturally. Sometimes I'll use a hair dryer uh, to dry the paint as well, but it depends on what I'm working on. So if I'm working on one of the videos, such as this leopard here, I will most likely use a hair dryer, unless, of course, it's dinner time, or unless, of course, um, I'm going to need to go make a cup of coffee. <laughs> so it all depends on different things, really. I mean, it's nice kind of let it dry naturally because at least that way it gives it the chance for the paint to blend for any different colours you put on there to kind of blend together. So working with those three colours, I've added that into the head and just kind of thinking about the different shapes and colours as you look at the, um, the photograph. But you've got to really zoom into that photo, really pinch into that photograph because by doing so, then you can see the background colours that you need. This is going to be the second layer of the wet in wet foundation wash. This is where we can start to think about smaller areas around the head. So instead of thinking about a third down then a third again of the head when you're wetting it to begin with, now you can think about those smaller areas where looking again at the reference photograph you can see how the um, the values change, the actual colour change that goes deeper in colour as it goes into little recesses around the face. So this is where you'd kind of wet those areas a little bit further than you need to because then you can allow that edge, the edge of these to blend and then add those details in. Starting with the first layer of detail, I'm using what I called a replicator brush. And all this is, is something I made up and I've called it a replicator brush. From an old, 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 old brush, which is about to go in the bin. Okay. And because it's about to go in the bin, I thought, hmm, what can I use that for then? So with a pair of pliers, I simply crushed the end of the metal ferrule to flatten it out, completely destroyed it on purpose, which allowed the bristles to spray out like, um, Bit like a fan brush really and by doing so I can probably paint three lines in one go with this one and then after that I like to kind of soften it down that little bit give it a blast with the air dryer and then put the next layer of detail on Hello. now I'm switching to my size double zero brush by working with a double zero brush I find I've got much more control the brush itself is not sable it's synthetic and what you've got to think about is what's called the snap rate and all the snap rate basically is, if you've never heard of that one, is that if you put your finger on the tip of the brush, on the bristles, okay, pull it back a little way, it's not too far, you don't want to break it, and then let go, if it comes back really quickly, that's a really good snap rate. And for me, having a good snap rate with a short bristled brush, that's not easy to say then you find that will give you much more control as well. Plus also, where do you hold that brush? Do you hold it down by the metal ferrule? 
you hold it further back. So these are things you've got to question yourself when you're trying to get those fine details on. I hold mine just above the metal ferrule, but that's just habit over 40 plus years of painting. So, you know, think about that when you're going to paint again. If you want to really kind of concentrate on those details, how do you hold your brush? Other than that, this next layer as you can see is going on, which is a little bit darker, that's going to be burnt umber, a little bit of lamp black, and also a little bit of burnt sienna, kind of mixed into that, and more to a milky consistency, not watery anymore. So we're going to the milky consistency. But by doing that, I'm gradually increasing the depth and the layers of the fur. So every time I put another layer on, the deeper the fur will look. They can see I'm actually painting around the spots of this leopard as well, so I don't want to really put those in until the last minute. That's going to be the, the final, the final deep dark colour. I know, the deep dark colour. Now working around the ear, you've got to think about where the directions of the, of the hairs go. Some are sweeping, some are well all over the place as well, and some little fine hairs coming out into the background of the white of the paper. Now, are you ready? This is the darkest colour going on. Now the darkest colour in question is lamp black and phthalo blue for the darkest areas down the bottom. And by doing that we can add that down those areas. But obviously what you've got to consider as well when you add a darker colour on, you've got to think about that you don't need quite as much. When you think our initial layers of detail, that we first, the first layer of detail, which was the burnt sienna, the raw rumba and so on which we used earlier on, that was very watery, but we covered the entire head of the leopard. Every layer that we add, we're actually adding fewer brush strokes because the darkest layer is only for those dark areas, isn't it? You know, we're trying to reserve the colors showing through uh, from our previous layers of detail. So trying to maintain those lighter areas within, in this case, the leopard's head, will help create the form and the shape as well as obviously the um, the direction of the brush strokes. So another quick dampen down and I can start adding another layer of detail back over the top as well using the same kind of colour. I just want to do this gradually and you can see the idea of a watercolour is that the beauty about working gradually from light to dark is that you can um, if you make a mistake or a happy accident as the great Bob Ross used to say then that gives you the facility of being able to kind of change that and lift off paint so you can fix something that's, you know, not quite right at the early stages. But when I'm adding this dark colour on, as you can see, which is the lamp black and burnt umber, then you find when you start adding this on, trying to remove that paint is not quite as easy. Yes, you can take the paint off if you're using, you know, a wet and wet technique, a wet brush and a, uh, you know, a folded kitchen roll, anything like that, which is what I tend to do. Um, but it's not quite as easy and it can still leave marks on the paper. That's why all the pre-planning beforehand, thinking about the colours before you even start the painting, to so do a lot of colour testing before you start, always, always pays off. Because at least that way, you've got some understanding on the kind of colours you're going to use before you start painting, and also um, the kind of way you're going to approach that painting in general. So sometimes I may spend half an hour 45 minutes, maybe even an hour, testing paints out before I even start on the project. So keep working on those details, keep thinking about the brush direction, and when you load your brush, don't overload it. And the way I tell my members on my Devon Artist website is what you need to do is when you load the brush, so you've got your mixing well, okay, and you've got your creamy version of lamp black and burnt umber, for example. What I would do is, is pop the brush into that, mix it around a little bit and then roll it as a pull away along the side, the edge of the mixing well, pull up along the edge of the mixing well, rolling the brush in between your fingertips as you pull away and then dab it just once, maybe even twice, just lay lightly on some kitchen roll before you go to the painting. Because that, that way what you do actually, you'll actually lift off a little bit of paint but then you'll give yourself a much finer point to work with. Now when you add these fine details over the edge of, in this case as I keep saying, the, uh, the leopard, then you find you can just pull out into the white of the paper as you do so, so that way you're going to get a nice tapered line as you do that. 
Now you can see this coming together. I know, there's lots of spots before my eyes at the moment. Ah! But it's looking okay now, so it's nearly getting there. The shape is starting to form. And then start finally adding the white paint. Now, watercolor white. This is one of those things, as I mentioned earlier on, which is a bit of a thing that not everybody likes to use. You can use, of course, uh, white gouache if you wanted to as well, which works just the same way. Um, but if you do buy watercolor white, make sure you buy one which is opaque in color. Because if it's semi opaque or semi transparent, it just will not cover the paper. The good thing about watercolor white as well is that you can tone it with another color over the top in one fell swoop. The white's got to be nice and dry first, though, and also you can thin it down as well. And with thin down watercolor white, you can head to those areas which are a little bit duller in color. Ooh, that rhymes. Now stay tuned to the end and I'll show you a link on how I painted a very detailed and realistic looking cat's eye and I did that here live on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and remember if you'd like to try out my real full time lessons and I'd paint this for example leopard and plus around 60 other videos I've got on there as well just pop along to my Devon Artist website have a look at the link in the description down below join today and get painting. Other than that, why don't you support my channel by giving me a big thumbs up. Don't forget you can also share this video with your friends as well. So something that you'd like to see your friends watch, then do that as well. Remember to click on subscribe down below and also that bell icon so you get notified when I put a brand new video here on YouTube. Just so you don't miss my next video. And finally, have a look in the description down below for my Facebook page as well. And you'll find both Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, they're all there for you to have a look at. So until next time around, thank you very much for watching today. Remember to keep them brushes wet and enjoy the next video on how to paint a realistic looking cat's eye. See you soon.